So we just saw how to use a while loop essentially to recreate a for loop. We printed the numbers 0 through 5 two different ways. And that's great. You can do that with a while loop. But that's not how I use them. That's not how most people use them. You would just use a for loop if you need to generate a set range of numbers, 0 to 10, 100 to 10, whatever. Where a while loop really excels is when you're writing a loop where you don't know exactly how many times it's going to run. We don't know that we're going from 0 to 10. We don't know we want this to run exactly 20 times. Instead, it might be something like the 2048 game example I showed you, or a chess game, where you continue to have your game logic loop until there is a game over. And for a good player, that might happen in the case of 2048. It might happen after hundreds or thousands of turns. In a bad player, like when I was playing, it might happen in 100 turns or 10 or 20 turns. So you don't code that in. You use a while loop, and essentially it would look like while not game over, or while still alive, or lives left is greater than zero. So you don't know exactly how many times it will run, but at some point in this loop, you will be changing lives left, or you will be setting game over to be true. A simple version of this would be to make a number game, a guessing game, where we won't even be guessing ourselves. Our computer, or JavaScript, will generate a random number from 1 to 10. That will be the target we're trying to guess. Let's say 9. Then we'll make a second random number, which will also be from 1 to 10, and we're trying to hit 9. So maybe the first guess will be 5. We'll have a while loop that runs while the guess is not equal to the target. And then as soon as they are equal, meaning that we've guessed correctly, the loop is over. So let's start by generating a target number. So let target, and that can be a const, equals. And if you can recall back to how we do this, we start with math.random. That gives us a decimal between 0 and 1, like 0 0.9 or 0.95 or 0.6. And then I'm going to multiply it by 10. And then we floor that to chop off the decimal. That will give us a whole number. If you need some review, you can go back and, and watch the video where we covered this. I think I said this then. I am not a fan of how we generate random integers in JavaScript. This is annoying. Many other languages have a simple method like randint, but JavaScript does not. Okay, so this gives us a target number. Let's just verify that. Console.log target. We get six. Okay, we do it again. We get nine. Now let's duplicate this and generate a guess. So we'll call this guess. And I'm going to make this a let variable, not a constant, because we're probably going to have to guess again, meaning that the value will change that is stored in guess. Target will stay the same, so we can make it const. Guess is most likely going to change, unless we guess it right the very first time. So now we should have two variables. We have target, and we have guess. Guess is not the same. We did not guess it correctly. So now we can implement our logic. Our loop is going to look like while guess is not equal to target. So while we have not guessed or generated the correct random number, what do we need to do? Well, this is the really important part of any while loop. You need to eventually have a way of making this condition false so that the loop will stop. Otherwise, you end up with an infinite loop, which we've seen before with for loops is not good, not desirable. We need some way of making this false eventually so we can break out. And in our case, it just means guessing again. So how would we guess again? We would just copy this. We don't need let because we're not trying to redeclare. We're not trying to make a new variable. We're trying to update the existing guess. So now we'll get a new random. And let's console.log guess in here each time and just see what we get. I'm going to refresh, and it should loop a couple of times until eventually we guess the correct answer. Let's, at the bottom, verify it. We'll console.log target, and we'll put the variable target right there. I'm using a template literal. And then guess, and we'll do the same thing. All right, and you can see we started with our guess being 
eight. That was incorrect, so we made a new guess. That time we got seven, so this was still true. They were not equal. So we printed out seven, we made a new guess. This time, guess was one, and that was the target. We can see here what was printed out, target one, guess one. That means this is now false, and it's done running. So we go down to this line, and that prints out target one, guess one. Awesome, so that works. Um, I would change this up a little bit. It would be nice to see each guess the entire way through. So right here, I'll print this out here so we can see it. And then at the bottom, I'll instead say, congrats, you win, even though the user is not doing anything. And let's also print out this down at the bottom one more time because right now what's happening is when you do guess correctly or when the guess is updated correctly this loop does not run so this line never prints out so we don't see what the target is and what the guess is so I'm putting it down here again and there we go so we have six was the target the whole time eight was the first guess then nine then we got six this line is printed after the loop right here and then congrats you win and that's pretty much it for this example this is a really common pattern. So if I were to break down this pattern, we have while some condition in the loop update or attempt to make that condition false, which is what we did here. We attempted to eventually make this condition false. It might take a hundred tries, it might take a thousand tries. Just like the 2048 game or a chess game, you could play for hundreds of moves or it could happen really quickly. And a for loop doesn't easily accommodate that. A for loop is great when you are just trying to generate numbers from one index or one start point to a stop point. It's not as great when you have this uncertainty around how many times something will run. So that's when I like to use while loops. Just remember, if you do not update something that has the chance of making this false, you'll get an infinite loop. If we didn't change guess, and we only guessed one time, this would go on forever. And that's it for now. There is a small change you, you could make potentially. Um, here you can see I'm duplicating the guess, the initial guess, and this guess down here. I could just make guess undefined at the beginning, and that would work, although my first console.log would also print out undefined here, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to duplicate that code. It's okay. 